Okay, so if we continue with the pre-lab questions for experiment number eight, we look at question number two. It's asking us, what is the molarity of calcium two plus ions in the municipal tap water from the previous question? So if we look at the previous question, we have determined the amount of calcium carbonate present in the 25 mil uh, sample of municipal tap water. Here, this question is asking us for the concentration, specifically the molarity, so moles per liter, of calcium ions. So we're going to have to do some conversions to go from calcium carbonate to calcium ions and also from parts per million to moles per liter. So if we start off with our only number, we have 394.992 parts per million. Now, in this particular example, you don't want to write parts per million. You want to write what the units actually stand for, which is milligrams of calcium carbonate per one liter. And again, I have to use the entire number. I don't want to use the rounded number because that will introduce errors into the calculation. So if I have milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate, I want to determine the moles per liter of calcium ions. So right now I need to stop talking about milligrams and somehow convert that to moles. So first I have to obtain grams of calcium carbonate. So that's going to include the molar mass and but first I have to get it into grams. So I know that for every 1000 milligrams I have one gram. So if I cancel my units, milligrams is gone, leaving me with grams of calcium carbonate. So now that I'm in grams, I need to get to moles of, calci or, uh, moles of calcium carbonate, which is going to require a molar mass. So if I look on my periodic table, I see that for every one mole of calcium carbonate, I have 100.9 grams of calcium carbonate. So this is the molar mass. This is my conversion factor. So if I set it up appropriately, I know that moles needs to be on top while grams is on the bottom. So if I cancel out my unit, grams of calcium carbonate is gone, leaving me with moles of calcium carbonate. Now, moles of calcium carbonate per liter. I need to get to moles of calcium per liter. So that means I'm going to have to do some conversions from calcium carbonate to cal calcium. And if you look at this problem, you know that one of the conversion factors that you can use is the chemical formula itself. So what do I mean by that? I mean by for every one mole of calcium carbonate, it is equivalent to one mole of calcium two plus. Because if you look in the formula, you see that there's one calcium and one carbonate. So if I were to, if I were interested in carbonate, I could say that for every one mole of calcium carbonate, I have one mole of carbonate present. So you can use the molecular formula in order to determine what your conversion factor is. So here I have my conversion factor that I need to stop talking about calcium carbonate and start talking about calcium. And if I set it up so that my units cancel correctly, I see that I'm left with moles of calcium two plus per liter. And I didn't do anything with the liter, so that means that they're still there. So moles per liter is big M. So when I solve this problem, I get an answer of 3.946368 times 10 to the minus three molar of calcium two plus but I have to be mindful of my significant figures and I know that even though I use the entire number this has two significant figures. Um, all other ones are considered to be exact. This one has five significant figures. 
So we know that since we're multiplying dividing, my final answer for this has to have two significant figures. So we would have an answer of 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 molar or moles per liter of calcium 2 plus ions. Now, the next question asks us whether or not this would be classified as being hard or soft water. So what you would have to do is look at your introductory pages, reading them, and what you would see is that concentrations greater than 200 parts per million would be considered hard. So in this particular instance, we have a concentration, if we look even at the calcium carbonate, we have a concentration that is definitely greater than 200 parts per million. Therefore, this water would be considered and classified as hard water. Now, one of the last things that you have to be able to do is use dimensional analysis, use conversion factors, and able to go from any of the units of parts per million to another unit of parts per million. So if you look at your introductory readings, you'll see that parts per million has several different units that's equivalent to. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we look at big M, molarity, we know that it's equivalent to moles per liter. Same thing here with parts per million, except that parts per million has several things that it's equivalent to. It's equivalent to milligrams per liter, and if you look in the experiment itself, you'll see that there are approximately four or five more units that it's equivalent to. So what this question is asking us for is to convert from one unit of parts per million to milligrams per liter, which is another unit of parts per million. So if we start this, we have 215 parts per million, and the best unit to start with will be grams per million grams of solution. And what you'll see as we go through and do this problem, that you'll see how the units cancel out, leaving us with our desired units. So we have grams of calcium carbonate over million grams of solution. Now, if I want to get to milligrams per liter, I have to convert my grams of calcium carbonate to milligrams of calcium carbonate, because that's ultimately what the question is asking for. So, I know that for every one gram, I have a thousand milligrams present. So if I cancel my units, grams is gone, leaving us with milligrams per gram of solution. Now, taking care of the milligrams part, I now need to go from grams of solution to liters. So this is where the density comes into play. Remember, we can utilize a density in order to go from a mass volume to a, vo or a mass unit to a volume unit and vice versa. So in this case, we know that for every one gram of solution, we're going to have one milliliter. So in terms of unit cancellations, we see grams of solution has now been canceled out, leaving me with milliliters. But I don't want milliliters, I want liters, so I have to do an additional conversion. So I convert and I know that for every 1,000 milliliters, I have one liter. Units cancel, leaving me with milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate, or parts per million of calcium carbonate. So by doing this, by using multiple conversion factors, which is known as dimensional analysis, I'm able to show how all of the units of parts per million are equivalent to each other.